it is time to step into the time machine and go back to the 50s and 60s. That's right, this is going to be my update for the At The Hop project. If you would be so kind as to please do all of the things, you know what they are. Okay, so At The Hop uses the social media hashtag At The Hop Project Pan. This was created by the beautiful, gorgeous makeup queen, Misty. And she did this in collab with the Fantastic Ladies group. And so her channel, as well as the Fantastic Ladies, will be linked down in the description box for you, as always. This is a project she had start November 25th of 2022, will end November 25th of, or 24th, I'm sorry, of this year. And we are doing updates monthly or bi-monthly on the 25th or around, you know my schedule is fluid. So she did this really nice and open-ended she likes to pull in everything for her projects at the beginning and then just kind of roll through them um a lot of people do roulette style sometimes you go down the list sometimes you pick and choose we could put them all in we could put as many as we want we could do it roulette we could do whatever we wanted basically was how she left this she left it up to us which makes my world an easier place now um we're also allowed to set any goals we want on this you know, the, the usual stuff. Nothing too tremendously earth-shattering there. She started this with, well, I think she had 48 originally, but then Jessica Lee helped her come up with the last couple, so there are 50 prompts in this project. I'm going to try to get to them all. There's a lot. <laughs> so we have a lot of different stuff that's in here that is a little bit longer term that we are going to be discussing. And the first one is Splish Splash. Now, a lot of these things... Um, our song titles too so I'll try not to I'll try not to sing but if you watch Misty's videos she sings for you I brought in this lush bubblegum lip scrub and I keep this in my shower so it's a bath or shower product in my opinion now mine I have to keep adding oil to mine mine is really dried out right now but that is all that is left and it's kind of in chunk there's a big chunk in there every time I turn it it tips so all right, we're getting there, okay? We're getting there. This will eventually be finished off. That is the goal. I have not done weights because I have to keep adding oil because it's old enough where it keeps drying out on me. Then we have the twist, and that is a product that twists up. I brought in my Bite Beauty lipstick in Pastel. I have not had this this long, that long, um, but it's going off. It smells bad. So, that is what it looks like. I brought this in for five uses. Yeah, that's not right. And I did get my five days of use on it. And honestly, that's going to be decluttered. But that is completed for this project, so that's a rollout. Then I have tears on my pillow. These things play in my head. I might not be singing along, but when I read these things, the music starts playing. That's the way my crazy train brain does work, yes. So this is a waterproof or cryproof item. So you know I brought in a waterproof eyeliner. This is the Sephora brand. It is the retractable waterproof eyeliner in number 18 glitter green. I brought this in for five uses. And you can't see the glitter when I do it this way. You can see it a lot more in the black than the green. But that is what that looks like. I got my five uses. This is going to roll back into my collection because that is completed. Then we have the pompadour. So this is a hair care item. With this, I just decided I was going to bring in my standard. This is the sexy hair. This is the style curling cream. Um, this is a five, was a five ounce, 5.1 ounce, 150 milliliter bottle. It's a curl moisturizing control cream, basically. I use this when I wash my hair. I'm going to just leave this in until I leave because I don't know that I'm going to finish it. But we went from 106 grams last month when I introduced it to 88.1 when I weighed it today. So I'm getting use on it. We'll see. It, maybe I can finish it. I don't know. I don't wash my hair every day, you guys. I've got too much and it's just up and I probably shouldn't mess with it because it just makes it even weirder. But anyway, then we have got number 23, Cinderella, a sparkly or glittery product. For that, I brought in one of my Nomad singles, and I brought in, let me see if I can get this out of here now. Huh. Yeah, so prepared. This is the shade Romeo. Um, this is from their Love and Death palette, 
and they did come out with singles so I got a single and it looks red but it's actually really nice and pink and it is very very shiny and sparkly oh yeah see you're getting sparkle it is beautiful uh, I do have it on in today's I look this is the same one that I had on for paranormal <laughs> I didn't think of what I was wearing. Uh, my goal with that was five uses. I have so far done two, so that is remaining in the project. Then we have Treasure Island, an item that is a treasure in your collection. can be a favorite item or one that you hoard and don't use. I was kind of hoarding this, but this is also my favorite. So this is the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. This is the 3.5 ounce, so this is their big one that they sell their full size they sell a travel one too and it was brand new when I brought it in this is what it looks like now this month and I will take a picture of this so that we can compare next month how much I'm using I even brought my scoop in and I don't know why this is how I scoop it out is with this little plastic spatula and then I wash this off so that I'm not contaminating I'm weird it's really super nice and melty and I love that that will actually get any remaining residue off from eye makeup so if you have waterproof stuff on that will actually melt it it literally I think is the best out there it started at 234.6 grams that was my cat um when I brought it in last month it's now 192.5 grams that will remain in until completion then we have Misty which of course we have because of Misty so this is a song by Johnny Mathis and it is a bold lipper eyeshadow so for that I brought in another Nomad single this one is from the Monte Verde Cloud Forest it is Violet Saber Wing that is what it looks like I have it okay the very outer edge is where I have it on and that's bold that's pretty strong I put this in for th five uses I've gotten three it's really pretty. I really do like it. Um, it does stain a little bit, but that's fine. Who cares? I don't worry about anything that stains. Then we have the Banana Boat song, Deo, a product in your morning routine. Well, this was a specialty in my morning routine. I brought in the eight-pack size of the Skin Iceland. These are the Hydro Cooling, Hydro Cool Firming Eye Gels. That's hard for me to say. This package is completed, so this is going to go in my empties. I finally finished them off. So this one is done. There were four left from last update to now. So this is rolling out of the project, and that's completed. Yay! All right, then we've got Sleeping Beauty. So this is a lip product, and I brought in this Laura Mercier Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in the shade Fresh. I have it on today, but I do have a gloss over it. It is lovely. I brought this into finish and okay, you guys, I'm going to show you what's left. That's what, that's what's left. It's not the biggest lipstick in the world. And I thought I should be able to finish that. No problem. Why do I do these things to myself? I don't know, but that's what it looks like. And I have used it a couple times since last month. So you can see my start line last month and this month's update my lines are never straight but you get the general idea so that obviously will continue to remain in the project then we've got aluminum Christmas tree something metallic or foiled for that I brought in this gorgeous gold metallic looking eyeshadow this is also nomad this is also the love and death palette and this is the shade Moors. now this is supposed to be a topper but it does have some gold in it. It's very pretty. But when I put it on, you can see there's not a whole lot of color pay off, not a lot of base, but it does have a bit of gold. It is beautiful. I have used this three out of the five times that I set for this one, so that's staying in. Okay, now I'm done with my palette. I can move that. All right, then we've got 1955 Bel Air, a product you consider a classic or the oldest product in your collection one of them another Mary Kay product this is the gentle cleansing cream formula one that is so old oh my goodness I don't even know how old it is and I wouldn't tell you if I did know it's that embarrassingly old I um, 
this is a four ounce bottle. I brought this in to finish. It is the cleanser that I use religiously every day for years when I was younger. This is, I think, the last one of these I have. Unless there's still an open one in Arizona. I'm not sure. But um, this started at 129.8 grams last month. It is 104 this month. So that's going to be in for a while until I get that one done. Then we've got 1955 Lincoln Continental. Apparently I had a car thing going on. So this is a product that's in for the long haul. Well, for that, I brought in my hairspray. I will use this until I leave because I have another one of these there. I don't carry this back and forth. It's not worth it. But, so Suave Max Hold, number eight. I think, well, I don't know if you can see the number on the, the eight in there. It's kind of reflective. This is an 11 ounce bottle. Decent size there. It started at 160.4 grams when I brought it in last month. It was not brand new. It is now 144 grams. So I do use it. I'm not quite as slow as Danny with hairspray, but I'm not one that goes through them super quickly. All right, then I had in, I had in Calendar Girl. Wow. So this is an item nearing or is expired in your collection. Definitely expired. This is actually from the demo kit. This is the Mary Kay, what is this called? Hydrating freshener. This is part of that number one formula. I have a loose hair. Yeah. And um, this is a, the toner that I use. I am finishing off a bottle of this that was for resale. This one is not. This was just part of the kit. And I thought I would get done quicker, so I haven't actually started using this one yet. And you have seen or will seen the mini bottles that I use all the time, too. But this is the next thing that we are starting on. So it hasn't changed. We're still at 118.1 grams. Yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll I think I'll get as much done as I can before the end of the project because I think that'll probably come with me. All right, so that means that I did have what did I have? I had three completed items that I'm rolling out, but I'm actually bringing in four. I started this one slower because I started too many projects around the same time, so I'm not sure how many I've completed, but I want to make sure I hit as many as possible before this ends. So we're bringing in four. The first one is return to sender. Yep, it's playing in my head. A product you would return or declutter. This is a little bit unusual for me. You know I'm not a huge lip gloss fan, but I thought, okay, I got the new Scooby-Doo Glam Light 2 collection, and I got the whole set. So I thought, well, okay, I'll bring in the lip gloss. Now, I thought it was supposed to be pink. I think the bottle is pink, and I think this is the lip gloss because I was mixing it up and swooshing it around as much as I could, and I'm pretty sure that the bottle itself is colored because this is the color of the lip gloss. And this is the Daphne one. So it's got a little hint of a, a pink to it, and it's got a whole lot of sparkle. I'm guessing that this is going to wear off, and I'm going to have glitter all over my lips. Not my favorite look. So I'm bringing this in for five days use, application, reapplication, whatever, just to get some usage on it to see if it's something I'm going to keep or if that's going to drive me crazy. All right, then in combination with that, I brought in Peter Pan, an item in childlike or child themed packaging. So what I did was grabbed the Daphne lipstick. Those were the two pieces from that lip kit. And this is the box for it. That's how it came. And I thought, well, Scooby-Doo is childlike, child themed. It's from my childhood. Fun trivia fact for you. Scooby-Doo was made by Hanna-Barbera Studios for, specifically for the CBS Saturday morning show. So that was like part of their programming that they did with all the cartoons for the kids. And this was created for that. The um, original show, the first televised Scooby-Doo thing, was the show Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And it premiered September 13th, 1969. So I'm a little bit outside of Misty's range because I think she did this through like the mid 60s. I've been out of that with my music moments and everything else too. But I thought that was so cute with Daph Daphne on it. And that's what it looks like. And it's kind of a peachy, coraly pink. 
so it's not a true cool pink but it's not bad it looks like it'll be a fairly nice neutral for me so I brought this in for five days used to and when it separates Daphne separates so if you don't put it together right she's not properly dressed <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me. I'll have to always make sure I put it together the correct way. But that's coming in for five uses. I don't know. I'm getting sidetracked. Crazy train. Okay. So then we've got Rebel Without a Cause, which was a movie. It was the James Dean movie. Um, Natalie Wood. I don't remember who else off the top of my head. I want to say... It's not Marlon Brando. Is it? Anyway, not the point. So the point is, this is a product the beauty community loved, but you didn't. Now, there it is. This is a brand that has gotten a lot of love. This product has gotten holy grail status from certain people. And I picked it up. And I'm not super fond of it. I don't think it's worth it. But this is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Primer. This was basically um, an influenced purchase because this was Emily Noel's absolute all-time favorite. This was her holy grail. And so I had picked it up and I brought it. I, I have opened it. I have used it. I don't think it's all that. And I don't think ABH as a brand is all that, to be honest. Um, but they're still widely loved in the community. I'm just not the biggest fan. So this is a 0.24 ounce 7 milliliter product. I have been using it about a week or so when I'm filming. Uh, I weighed it today. It's 11.5 grams. I'm not going to track usage. I'm just going to do weight on this because basically any time that I do an eye look, I'm going to be using this as part of my base. That's just kind of how that's going to go. So we'll just keep tracking it until the project ends or it's done. Eye primers take me forever to go through. All right, then McDonald's. An item you use up or go through quickly. For me, that a lot of times is setting sprays. So I'm bringing in the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This is a one ounce bottle, 30 grams, or 30 grams? 30 milliliters, what does that say? Magnifying glass. 30 milliliters, I wrote it down wrong. I didn't think it said 30 grams. Um, I weighed it, it's 46.1 grams. So this is the travel size, we're gonna recycle that box. And it does come with the standard dual cap. So I took this outside piece off and just weighed it this way. This has not yet been used, but it's going in the travel bag. So this one is all set. And I will give you updates on that. Um, I have two trips. The one that I'm on when you're seeing this. And then there's another one that I'll be going on at the end of August. So I don't actually want to use this up completely right away. I'm going to let... I'll let you know what it is at the next update, but then I will probably set it aside so that I have it for my trip at the end of August, just because it'll be easier to pack than a full size. So we'll, I mean, it'll get finished and we'll figure it out from there. That is everything that I have for this project. So now we move on to the music moment. And I was trying to kind of keep with the era. That being said, what I did is I am bringing in a song from a movie. I am bringing in this song, not Little Wild One, that's what's playing in my head, Dance With Me Tonight, and it is from the movie That Thing You Do. Now, the soundtrack for the movie, when it lists these songs, it does say who wrote it, but if it's a song that the band in the movie played, it's actually credited to them. So I don't know if it's those guys performing and singing. I have absolutely no idea. But the artist is listed as The Wonders. Now, if you have not seen the 1996 movie, That Thing You Do, there are some things you should maybe know. 1996, yes, is when it came out. It is set in 1960. Oh, man, I had it. I did have it. I think it's four. It just says 1960s. I think it's supposed to be set in 1964. It's basically the story of a fictionalized band. And it talks about um, the progression of the band. And this is something that did happen to a lot of bands back in the day. They kind of became the one-hit wonder. So it's primarily got Tom Everett Scott as the main character, and he ends up stepping in as a replacement drummer after the drummer's injured 
they end up getting a gig. They win a Battle of the Bands contest. They get a gig. Then they get like a manager and then they get on this label and then they, you know, get bigger and bigger and do this tour. And then everything kind of falls apart. That's essentially the thing. So Tom Hanks does play a role in this movie. This is a movie that he actually wrote and directed. And I want to say it's his directorial debut. I may be wrong on that. No, it was. It was. All right. And uh, the label that they get, the band gets signed to in the movie was a fictionalized label. It was named Playtone. They did artwork for it. They did all this stuff for it. After this movie, Playtone became real. Tom Hanks actually launched the Playtone label. And he um, did do... Uh, what does it say? I don't remember which... Okay. The soundtrack is actually released on the Playtone name in, conduct, in conjunction with Epic Records, so it's a part of that. It uh, peaked at 21 on the Billboard 200 charts. It has a replica of the artwork from the, the movie. So that is the artwork that is used for the Playtone label. Hanks later used the success of the movie to launch the actual label. And... He has then done soundtracks of all of his subsequent films, as well as other films, including Bring It On and the television show The Sopranos, came through Playtone. So that's what you needed to know about that. Now, as for the soundtrack itself, it is, according to Music Canada, certified gold. For the RIAA in the United States, it is certified platinum with over 1 million sales. Or certified units is how they label it, but it's basically sales. One of the things that I did not know, but which is interesting, is that they did do, in 2021, a, re a Wonders Night reunion. And they did this at the Erie Sea Wolves Park, which is a, um, I want to say it's a baseball game. So... Three of the of the guys, including Tom Everett Scott, actually went to Erie to do this, and they did like autograph signings and pictures and all of that kind of fun stuff with stuff with it. Ethan Embry wasn't there, but he was did it um, via video. I can't think. And so because of this, they did it as a bunch of oh, they did a panel discussion too. That's what Ethan Embry was there for. They did it as a fundraising effort, and they raised. $25,500 for Notice Ability. And that is a nonprofit organization de dedicated to helping students with dyslexia. There were also donations made to Notice Ability. Um, so it was nearly a quarter of a million dollars that they raised. And this was up for the 25th anniversary of the movie. And because it's set in Erie, the band, that's where the band is from fictionally, that's why they did it there. And it also earned the Sea Wolves Promotion of the Year recognition in Ballpark Digest. That was all news to me. I didn't know anything about that. But if you have not seen the movie, it is playing. Um, you can find it on the Independent Film Channel. You can find it on the Sundance Channel. It does play quite often. It was really well received. Does, oh, it does talk about the reception. It grossed 25.9 million, sorry, domestically and 8.7 million internationally. The worldwide gross of 34.6 million and it debuted at number three. So it was quite well received and play or quite popular with the fans. Jeez Louise, I can't talk. Anyway, I'm gonna link a clip. The song, the video for the song is actually a clip from the movie. So that's what you're gonna be getting down in the description box. You can find Misty down there, you'll find the Fantastic Ladies, you will find all of that fun stuff. But if you haven't had a chance to um, actually listen to the soundtrack, there's some great music on there and it kind of does harken back to that 50s, 60s, early 60s sound. So I thought that fit in well with the theme. Check out some of the other stuff, too, from that soundtrack if you haven't heard it. But for sure, check out this song. It's a good one. Until next time, everybody, thank you so much for giving me some of your time. I truly appreciate it. See ya. Bye.